Honorable Minister of State for Agriculture and Rural Development, the Director General for the National Agricultural Seed Council, uh, IITA Director for West Africa, Professor Salako, the TAC member, our distinguished farmers, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, my presentation is uh, going to give just a glimpse of what we have been doing in the seed, yam seed system. The time is short. I'm uh, grateful to the Honorable Minister for the addition of time so that we can see what we have. And I bet that many people who are inquisitive will need more questions. We can do that later on. Now, uh, if we look at yam, our traditional crop, as we all know, it is mostly being produced under traditional systems. And uh, we look at what systems there are, what are the challenges, the improved methods that we have in place, and uh, what has brought us this far to the seeds that we have for farmers today. Uh, the traditional systems of seed yam production, there are basically three. There may be others. But what our farmers do is that they milk the crop. They harvest the same crop twice. At about uh, six to seven months, they will go in, remove a tuber that is used as food, and the second harvest at the end of the season, they use it for seed. That way, you don't allow the crop to complete its cycle because you have to take out something from the uh, crop. Then there is sorting, whereby you plant your crop and then at harvest, you just go and sort. The big tubers are used for food, the small ones are used for seed. And then lastly, the tubers that would have been used for food are cut into big chunks for seed, sometimes 250 grams, but it could be as high as 1.5 uh, kilograms. Now, this is, these are just some of the, me the, the methods I've just described. You see a big tuber with a small one hanging by the side. The big one is for seed, and the big one is for food, and the small is the seed. Yes. So what are the challenges of this uh, system? As we have heard earlier, the multiplication ratio is very low. If you plant one, uh, from one tuber, all we hope to get is like three, one to three tubers that you will use the next season. We have uh, low availability, poor availability of improved seed. Most of the improved seeds that have been introduced in the system more than 10 years ago, you don't find them with farmers. The seed is high in, in cost. There is no regulation for quality. Anything goes to the market. And because the quality of seed is poorly defined. Then we have uh, uh, farmers recycling their seed. Every farmer here will tell you how expensive the seed of yam is. It is the most expensive input of every farmer. So because it's expensive, they keep recycling. You just harvest and keep for planting the next crop. And then, in so doing, some profit is being lost, and what would have been used as food ends up being used as seed. Now, we have some improved methods, like the mini-set technique. It has been around for almost 40 years, developed uh, by IITA and the uh, National Root Crop Research Institute. We have vine cuttings. You can actually cut the vines of the yam plants and plant it. Then we have uh, other methods that are really aimed at generating high quality planting materials. Among them, we have the tissue culture, temporary immersion bioreactor system, and the aeroponic system. Now, this uh, 
shows, I'm sorry, it is not, it wasn't well focused. So we can't really see what is happening. Maybe if you take it closer so that you can see. The minister wants to see too. <laughs> uh, see, part, part of it is on the on the wall there. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no. Okay, while you are sorting that out, uh, we have the minister technique, which is very easy, and that is what we have been promoting with farmers. First, we ha we collect uh, select seeds that is of good quality, has started sprouting. You cut them into little bits, 25 grams to 100 grams. They are dipped into a fungicide, insecticide mixture. You spread it out for a day to dry, and then it is planted in the field. At harvest, you have your seed yams. Why this is, uh, is good? Because you can always uh, regulate the size of seed that you want to produce. If you cut smaller sets, you have smaller seeds. You cut larger seeds, you have larger seeds to plant. Next slide. And then we have the vine cuttings. Uh, this is a technique that we are just trying to promote vigorously because the multiplication ratio for this one is much higher than that of using tubers. You get the vines of a vine, yam plant, select from healthy plants, you cut them into single nodes. You plant them, you can see one there that is rooting already. The plants grow, they tuberize, and you can harvest your seed from there. Next, next slide, please. Then we have the tissue culture and bioreactor system. This uh, tissue culture has been around for so long, and that is what we have always been using for most crops so that we can clean them up, remove any virus, because with the uh, vegetatively propagated crop, virus is the most important disease that we need to control. So the tissue culture is used to clean up the plants. But the bioreactor system is an advanced uh, tissue culture technology. And we have it installed at IITA so that we can rapidly multiply. The rate of multiplication is much faster than using the conventional tissue culture. We see the tissue culture uh, flats there. Each vial has just one plant, but with the uh, bioreactor system, you see those are young plants growing inside that container. What it does is that you have two containers one for, your, uh, for the culture and the other one for the nutrients. There is another vial that takes air into the system. So you program it so that at intervals, nutrients will go into the plants. It gets what it needs and the nutrients go back to the bottom of the flask while the plants are growing as fast as possible. It is a sterile environment so that whatever clean plants go in there, they come out equally clean. Next, please. So these are some of our yam plants growing in the bioreactor system. After they grow to an extent, you get them out, they are hardened, then you can transplant them in the greenhouse or they can go uh, uh, in, back into the system for more multiplication. Next, please. And uh, the aeroponic system is what is very, very intriguing. It is a system that grows in a soilless environment. These are boxes that have been installed. There are pipes at the bottom of it, and at intervals, nutrients are, uh, the uh, mixture of nutrients is sprayed at the base of the plants. You can see uh, uh, one of our Yiswa professors is trying to see what is happening under. So we cut the yam vines, they are planted. You see the bottom of it there, it is rooting and producing a tuber. And as the tuber grow bigger, they are harvested and planted. So because it is soilless, we eliminate 
all soil-borne diseases. The plants come out very clean. And even the vines, they are so clean that I remember some uh, pressmen who came to see what was happening. They thought they were artificial plants because it's very glossy and very clean. All of those vines can be used as planting material. Next slide, please. Now, from the tish, uh, uh, aeroponic system, we have three types of planting materials. When we started, we were hoping to get tubers, but we eventually found out that vines even produce more than the tubers, because from the bush of vines, we get single node cuttings, and that will give you thousands of plants within a very short period. It also has the aerial tubers, the bulbils. So those are three different types of planting materials you can get from the aeroponic system. Next slide. Once you have your vine cuttings, you can equally take them directly to the field. Those are vine cuttings that have been rooted and they are in the field, they are growing, and you can harvest tubers straight away from them. Go next time. Now, another uh, milestone of YISWA is the development of the quality management protocol. Because we are after quality seed, we need something that we can use to be able to uh, ascertain the quality of what we are producing, and then if we move up to the certification of seeds. Next slide, please. And where we are today, is depicted in the diagram. We started off with a clean stock of seeds, which went through uh, pre-basic seed at the National Root Crop Research Institute. They handed over the seeds, uh, the pre-basic seeds, to NASC, that produced basic seeds, and our private seed uh, companies took it up, and today we have the certified seeds that where, farmers, uh, where young farmers can use. So in conclusion, if uh, what we have developed is properly handled, the high ratio propagation technique will break that jinx of poor quality and unavailability of uh, quality seed yam. Different production methods can be used in combination and we'll have an assurance of production of certified seed yams. Next slide. So we want to acknowledge the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for their financial support, and uh, all the colleagues of YISWA Project, especially our director, Dr. Asiedu, who has been very supportive, the project leader, Dr. Lava Kumar, who did the quality management protocols, Dr. Morufat Balogun, she uh, worked very hard on the bioreactor system. Please, if there are any questions, that you need more clarification, we can meet later on on this. So, thank you very much.